So many games in the NES library were hard. Ridiculously hard. Waking up in the morning kinda hard. If your guy can get it. And I'm not talking about the games that are completely broken or barely work. I'm talking about the ones that brought a challenge and kept bringing you back for more. It's my top 7 most challenging NES games. Adventures of Bayou Billy, made by Konami. Oh man, I'm pumped. Konami is one of the original king of games. Anything with its name on it was pure gold. So we're in for a treat. The Adventures of Bayou Billy. Jeez, I'm only 10 seconds into this game and I have a headache already. These voices may have been revolutionary, but how many of us growing up now suffer from hearing loss? The game starts up with a fedora sporting Ron Jeremy threatening to kill your girlfriend Annabelle, and it's our job to take that jerk down and save the day. This game is immediately merciless, and it does not get any easier the further you get in. I mean, it's a game, that's how they work. Every single enemy takes upwards of 9 hits to kill, the wildlife wants you dead. No, back! I have a stick! And if you're good enough to make it past the disgruntled locals, wildlife, and scuba divers... Uh, wait, scuba divers in the swamp? You're blessed with a holy grail of hormonally confused teenage wishes. Properly rendered 8-bit cleavage. So happy. Sometimes the style of the game changes between levels. The second level swaps to a first-person shooter perspective using the NES Zapper. Sweet! That's actually really cool! And eventually they even add in a racing portion, where you have to blow up enemy vehicles along the way. I can't make it past the third level, because it's that fucking hard. The game itself is worth the play. Blaster Master. We start off hanging out with our only friend in the world when he breaks free from the tyranny and chains of human captivity. Run, Froggy! Run! Froggy hops over to a conveniently placed crate of radioactive materials right behind this kid's garage. Why? Why is this just so casually in his backyard? Froggy touches it and grows 100 times his size and jumps down this hole. So of course we're gonna go after him. How dare he have freedom? When we get down there, we find and steal a military-grade weaponized vehicle and decide killing Froggy is much better than letting him go free. Now the story is pretty ridiculous, but the game's awesome. But by the time you get to the second screen, the game lets you know who's boss. I can't escape the damage, no matter what I try. There are portions of the game where you actually get to get out of your tank and adventure around, which is kind of really cool. Fall damage? You take... FALL DAMAGE IN A NES PLATFORMER?! I BARELY FELL! And that's a lot of damage! Other than the game being relentless, it handles very well. It has a lot of different pickups, and at times the game will also jump into a top-down perspective, which is really cool. And some of the bosses they throw at you here are really unique. The feeling of this game is much like Metroid, where by defeating bosses you gain powers to access new areas. It's a great game, it's just tough to do with only a few lives. Number 5. Journey to Silius. Unlike Blaster Master, this game has a fully fleshed out story, and a great anime inspired intro to that. The main character's father dies in a freak accident when the colony explodes. Shortly after, he finds a disc from his father suggesting that the terrorists were planning the colony's destruction all along and are responsible for his father's death. We've got from a giant mutant frog to a revenge story. I am ready to get my kill off. The game is a pretty great time, with several different weapons to choose from, the controls handling very well. It feels a lot like if Mega Man in Castlevania had a baby. Just like this, and, uh, and Dilius. Every time you get hurt, you pause and slide back a little bit. And the pain in the ass about this is it gives the enemies time to get right back on top of you again before you have time to recover. You can literally get stunlocked and die. I know other games did this too, like Mega Man, but Mega Man didn't have a shitstorm of bullets coming at you from every angle all the time. The game gives off a very futuristic vibe with its enemies and setting. There's things like laser traps, golems, uh, flying metal xenomorphs, Probably? This asshole's the worst. Stand still, you prick! Oh, and there's also, uh... It's, uh... A penis! I have to bring up the final stage. The final stage is a giant fuck you for making it this far. Jumping over conveyor belts sucks. Everything's gonna try and kill you in one shot, and if you die here, it's game over, man. Game over. And trust me when I say this, dragging coarse grind sandpaper across your nipples is probably worth getting more excited about than restarting this game. Number 4. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! Make no mistake, Punch-Out! is one of the best games on the NES library. We're faced with going head-to-head -head against hilariously culturally insensitive stereotypes like these.
<laughs> Piston Honda. Sounds like my last road trip with a weak bladder. You have to study your opponents to learn their movement patterns and to find their moment of weakness. As you progress in a fight, the game throws curveballs at you by changing enemy patterns from the beginning to the end. It's arcade style perfection. If you've never played it before, this game is hard. When you finally take down an opponent, it really feels rewarding and like you've reached a milestone. The only part of this game that is brutal is the fight against the big kahuna himself, Mike Tyson. I spent way too much time trying to beat him. I can't do it. I can barely make it past the first minute of the fight. Many of you guys can beat this son of a bitch. Tag me in a tweet, because I want to see it for myself. Number three. Battletoads is the quintessential NES fighting game. There is no fighting game that even comes close to feeling so perfect. The story is pretty typical. Cruising around the galaxy with the princess, she gets captured by a dominatrix who boobs. Hold on a sec. I'm starting to see a very revealing pattern on what made old NES games great. Feeling? Get it? Because of boobs? Controls are smooth. Beating up enemies feels just right. You get weapons, and even get to ride space dragons. This game is so jam-packed with personality, it's hard not to fall in love with. And in the first 10 minutes, this happened. It's so cool! So by the end of the second level, you're thinking, oh, you know what, this game isn't hard at all. And then comes the speeders. Tapping the button a second too late is instant death. And when it comes to the ice level, that requires pinpoint precision while you're sliding all over the fucking place. Stop! Oh, ice levels. And then there's more speeders, and then this fucking snake. This wasn't even half the game, and after a few hours, I still can't get past this. I wouldn't even think twice about multiplayer, because friendly fire is on, and it's a bitch. Number two. Ninja Gaiden. In a tale of revenge told through beautifully animated cinematic 8-bit cutscenes, it's not hard to become invested in completing the game just to see what's going to happen next. This is of course if you can survive the brutal onslaught of enemies and animals and traps the game throws at you. The game's not so bad at first, but once you get to level 3, and once they introduce the eagles, it's all downhill Nintendo hard mode from here. I wish I had more time to play through this, because after playing it 20 years later, it's easily becoming one of my favorite NES games of all time. Number one. Ghosts and Goblins. Oh boy. Mac Daddy of them all. The arcade classic that isn't afraid to kick you in the bag when you're down and dance on your eventual grave. That's right. Ghosts and Goblins. Two hits and you're dead. A handful of lives and that's it. It's you, your armor, and the lance versus the entire army of the undead for the next hour, provided you can get past the first fucking level. The game throws enemies at you left, right, and center, non-stop. If you blink, the game will take you from behind. Which, I mean, the first time might kinda suck, but I, I don't know about the second. If anything touches you, say goodbye to your armor, and once you lose the armor, any single pixel on the screen will kill you. Now the game itself is pretty great and completely playable until you meet the Red Devils. These assholes do not leave the screen, they have no pattern, they will dodge everything you throw at them, and they will keep diving at you until you're dead. And if you can't find a way to kill them, they go berserk when they turn white, flying twice as fast, attacking twice as much. Jesus Christ, stop it! My top 7 pick for the most challenging NES games. What are the hardest games you've ever played? If you like this video and want to see more like it, Leave a like and subscribe to show your support. Become Pixel today. Leave a comment below on a suggestion of what list you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.